Hello, this is Michael Gatorno at SEMA, the Senior Insurance Marketing Association. Today we're talking about cross-selling. Increase your sales without increasing your marketing efforts. Now we're going to focus today on optional coverage for Medicare Advantage beneficiaries, but these methods can be used on other product lines as well. Now as agents, we know it's easier to cover a client's needs in one appointment because the fewer appointments we have, but with more sales equals a better return on investment. So we're going to increase our sales without increasing our time in the field and reducing our marketing costs. And we do this by cross-selling. Now, every agent sold to cross-sell, of course, within Medicare marketing guidelines. However, many agents are never shown how to effectively present two products at one time. So we're going to look at one method producing agents are using to overcome this obstacle. And that's by telling one story with two solutions at the same time. The key is to blend the story of the two products so the client can see how these two policies work hand in hand. Now trying to tell two separate stories may confuse or turn off the client because they may not be able to switch to the next product line or they may think that you're, you're just trying to sell them additional insurance that they may not see the value then they judge they don't need. So to kind of give you an example of this, I'm gonna walk through a quick example using a, a fictitious numbers just to make it nice, nice and easy to follow. So Mr. Smith, when you go to the hospital, as you can see in your summary benefits here, you're gonna have a $200 copay for days one through five. So let's say you go to the hospital for three days, you're gonna end up with a $600 bill that you'll be responsible for, and the plan will pick up the rest of the money. However, we do have a way of having additional coverage come in and pay the $600 for you. So that way, you have a $600 bill, but we'll have a check coming to you to offset that so you have no money out of pocket. And if there's any additional funds left over, the money will be yours to keep because that check when it comes in will be in your name. So if you have additional drugs you have to take or follow-up visits with a doctor or specialist, you may have some extra funds left over to go ahead and pay those things as well. That's simple. That's example, all ex example you have to give and you just keep on moving through the summary of benefits and continue to cover anything that would be covered in the hospital indemnity plan through the summary benefits. So if ambulance rides are built into the sample one you have, then when you get to ambulance rides, you know, your copay is $200 for an ambulance ride, but we'll actually have a check sent to you for $300 and the extra $100 you could use for the ER visit or anything else that may come up. So the, you're going to present one package and solution at the end, and you're just going to walk through and tell them what copays are covered by the hospital indemnity plan. And of course, you want to be honest and ethical throughout the process. You don't want to promise them the world and not be able to deliver it. So at the end, you'll sell the package and say for this complete package, your total premium would be X amount of dollars per month. So and you could break it down, say, you know, your, your Medicare Advantage program won't cost you anything per month. And to get the additional coverage to cover the big costs will only be another $35 a month. And then take a quick overview of the copays are eliminated. And this will, Mr. Smith, this will eliminate your hospital copays. Also cover your ER room, your ambulance ride copays. And with that, there'll be money left over in case you have to pay the ER room visit as well. But make sure that the client knows that these are multiple policies being sold. I've seen cases come up where agents have sold multiple policies and the client didn't realize they were buying two policies and then they were upset because they felt they were tricked. So make sure that they know there are two separate policies being sold here, but working together to give them better coverage. So if there's a lot of money left over, let's say you're doing a critical illness plan where they're getting a large lump sum of money, let's say $5,000. Give them something to spend it on because most seniors aren't used to getting checks for $5,000 in the mail. And it may be hard to conceptualize in their mind. So give them something to spend it on. The main thing I use is private duty care and show them how to help the other nursing home. You know, Mr. Smith, when you get this $5,000 check, you know, it may seem like a lot of money, but you'd be going through a lot and you may need additional help at home. So Medicare doesn't cover caretakers to come in and help maybe clean the house, prep some meals, um, help you organize your drugs and such. So you could take this money and pay for additional caregivers and you have a better chance of staying at home than going to a nursing home for rehabilitation. So doing it that way, it's giving them, okay, I can spend this money on to stay home and stay out of a nursing home because most seniors have a fear of going to a nursing home. Not that they're all bad, but I'd rather recover at home than I would a nursing facility or rehab facility.
You can also mention extra drug copays or other miscellaneous expenses, but don't just say you'll get a check for $5,000 and go on vacation because that's not what insurance is about. It's not about getting money to take a cruise. It's about getting money to get better. So if you could show them how to get better with the funds they'll be getting, it can conceptualize easier in their mind and hopefully they'll see the value. Now, the scope of appointment forms, of course, you, there is a space for hospital indemnity products when you're talking about Medicare Advantage plans, which is circled there. You want to keep a copy on file. Most hospital indemnity, indemnity carriers do not need the summary of benefit, excuse me, scope of appointment, but keep them on file just in case. So in review, you want to practice this at home, blending your story, uh, you know, practice on your, your spouse, your dog, your fish, your, the mirror, whatever, because you want to make it sound natural. You don't want to sound like you're stumbling over yourself, kind of like what I did today. Make sure you're clear that there are two policies at the end, so two policies working together. Um, if you want, if you understand umbrella policies with auto and home, you could talk about those. You, you know, Umbrella policies are policies that cover... Um, any additional expenses that may come up um, if you get in a car wreck or a house fire or something. So if you got someone that's a little more savvy you're talking to, you can go into that if they understand that. Uh, but if you have questions or comments, please feel free to leave them on the SEMA forum. I want to thank you today for reviewing this. Uh, if you're not a member of SEMA yet, you can join for free at SEMA-net.com. Again, this is Michael Gutorna. Thanks again and hope to see you on SEMA.